Hello friends, how's it going? It's really great to see you guys. I took about a week off to just sit and chill and be moderately stressed out with the rest of the United States. Um, but now I'm feeling like it's time to get back at it. Um, I am having problems focusing, as probably a lot of you guys are, because all of our events have been cancelled. So there's no urgent push to do anything which kind of sucks and is kind of awesome at the same time. It's a little bit liberating. You can take more time to get stuff done, but it also like <clears throat> lends itself to a little bit of, uh, well, let's say slacking because we don't really have any deadline. So it's cool if we just watch Netflix for 15 hours solidly one night. Actually, it is cool. I actually totally believe like, I think if you want to be productive, you should be productive. And if you don't want to be productive, you should not feel obligated to be productive because this is stressful and we all need to chill. And uh, sometimes being productive is getting all that sleep that you've always wanted to get. And everybody says they're tired constantly. So this is our chance to maybe not be so tired constantly. So <clears throat> I'm trying to silver lining here. <laughs> um, but despite it sucking that we're all um, indoors it's for a very good reason and I mean it's a crappy reason but it's for a very good cause that we stay inside so I have decided that what I'm gonna do is set myself what I would like to call compassionate deadlines uh, compassionate deadlines meaning I'm gonna give myself plenty of space to like not whenever I want to um, but still have goals um, and I think that those goals are probably gonna be project by project and then also week by week so, um, people keep asking me, am I going to do the ball gown bodice since obviously the ball got cancelled and we're not going to Bath. And it didn't really, I mean, she says it's postponed until next year, but honestly they were going to have a ball next year anyway, so what's the difference between postponing it and cancelling it? Um, <clears throat> so I am still going to make the ball gown bodice. I do have the mock-up, like, still in my head, sort of, so I figure now is a good time to get that done. And also, when we come out of this weird isolation thing um and at some point before that i might have to get a job and then if i have to get a job then i won't have time to sew and i will be frantically making a ball gown that will just make me nuts so i'm gonna do the bodice which i find to be the hard part now uh the skirts are super easy so i'm not too worried about getting them done um but i need <laughs> i was gonna start them and then i realized i don't have inner lining or lining fabric for for that ball gown because I don't normally sew with black taffeta. Like normally I would interline and line with a very light color. So um, I need to order that. <clears throat> so that's on my to-do list as number one item for this week. Um, I also need to order boning. I need to figure out what the boning lengths are for all of the channels that I have. Let's see what boning I have because I have this like pile of boning that I can go through and see what I have. I also want to like catalog this and like write down what I have. So I know what I have, and then order some more. I think I might maybe make a corset at some point, and we'll need more boning. So <clears throat> um, I do have a synthetic whalebone too that I can use. So it depends on what seam it's in. If it's in a straight seam, then synthetic whaleboning will be what I use. Um, but if it's in a curved seam, then I'm gonna use spiral steel because that's by far the best choice for that. Uh, so I have to order fabric. I have to order boning, I'll we'll have to check and see if I have to order boning and order boning. The third thing is I did manage in my puttering around last week, um, I took out the lining or the the batting from the inside of this cap. I was making this yellow bonnet like forever ago. Do you guys even remember this? Um, <laughs> for new people, hi, this is my yellow bonnet that I've been trying to make. Um, and I realized that uh, I did line it with organdy. I just realized that this top is just too small. So I'm going to take that top and measure it and see how big it is and then I'm going to add like a couple inches to it and then I can put it on this bonnet top and trim it and get it done. So that'll be item number three for this week is getting that bonnet done. I would love to get it done by the end of the week. So I feel like that's probably like enough stuff to feel like I got accomplished but like still somewhat compassionate. I also did buy um, two sets of like cubby container things that are two, two, and two, so six cubbies with like baskets that go in them um, that I was gonna place in the center of the table that I'm sitting on, that you are sitting on right now. Underneath, there's a big gap here and it would still allow me to slide my legs under um, so I could sit at the 
the table like I am right now, but be able to have storage also deep in there. Uh, the problem right now is I am using it for storage of big bins of, of fabric, which is kind of dumb. <clears throat> so I'm gonna stop doing that and put a, a better storage situation in place. So hopefully I will have time this week to do that too. So who knows, I will put those items on my whiteboard to remind me of what I'm trying to do. After that, I'm not sure what's gonna go on. I do know that my 18th century um, wearable mock-up, I wanted to go ahead and make the, an actual 18, like not a wearable mock-up, like an actual silk one. But I did have some things that I found um, after wearing it that I, I think are like not wrong with it, but <clears throat> I would like to adjust. First of all, the, the straps here, the side, what do we call these? Shoulder strap? This part right here is really far over out on my body so my stays like show through that so I would like to widen that just a little bit to help cover my stays a little bit I do wear a fichu with it but <clears throat> I would love to be able to take that fichu off from time to time and go ahead and wear it without so and I will put probably some ruffles on the inside of one too so that should help cover that and then also my distance from my neck edge to my shoulder point is actually significantly shorter than most patterns and I didn't really take that into account when I had all that sleeve difficulty. So part of me wonders if I open up the sleeve head a little bit by cutting it back right here, like just sort of getting it bigger and then smaller again, right here, <clears throat> cutting that back so that the sleeve point is at the right spot, that I might be able to use the original sleeve that was that came with it. I just wanted to see. Like So basically what I'm saying is I want to do a mock-up and maybe make some more adjustments now that I've worn it and thought about it a little bit. Uh, Claudine did very lovingly draft me a new sleeve pattern. <clears throat> it's a little bit more modern of a sleeve than would normally be in an 18th century, but no one can really tell, so it's fine. But I would like to see if for some reason I can get that original sleeve to work. And I'm trying to figure out if it's me or if it's the pattern. So I'll probably work on that just a little bit after I get all these other things done. And then hopefully I'll get my fabric in from the fabric store and I can start working on the bodice and get that knocked out. I'm gonna try making piping and putting that in. I piped one thing before ever and it was the back section of my Regency dress but it's white piping on white fabric so you can't really tell so I'm gonna give that a go. Uh, weirdly I'm not a person who's piped very often and it looks great and I kind of want to do it on all my bustle dresses. I just got to get the the knack of it down and figure out what the deal is there. So those are my upcoming plans for this vlog and for probably the next vlog or two after that. Um, just try to keep motivated to keep getting things done, but also give myself the time and space to just chill and like not feel like I have to stress myself out with that. I definitely feel like we all as a group should help motivate each other, but also be compassionate. So I'm going to get started. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I did a bunch of stuff. I ordered the interlining. Turns out there's no lining. Which is like historically accurate. Lots, lots of ball gown bodices didn't have lining and I might just be totally fine with that. But I also might not like a lining. But then again, the pattern pieces are weird and they get like pleated at the top and then I have to figure out what that pattern shape. It's just like no lining. Interlining only. So I've ordered 20 yard bolts of twill because that's what Christine of Sostein told me that she does, and I was like, sounds good. Then I will always have black inner lining twill fabric, so that's fantastic. Um, what is the other thing on there? Measure boning and order what I don't have. I did do that. I measured the boning. There's a mistake in the pattern. It said you need 10 bones, but you actually need 11 because there's a little one that goes in the bottom of the front of the bodice, which I'm like, really? Okay. Like, I kind of want to put one all the way at the front of the bodice, but it just wants it down there at the bottom holding that little point straight and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do it your way. So there's actually 11. And I only actually needed to order two of them because I don't have seven and a half inch spiral steel. Anyway, so I ordered the other ones that I needed and some extras and some eyelets because I don't really want to have to hand sew eyelets into this thing. Sorry, Constance. Constance is an eyelet queen. The girl turns out eyelets like you wouldn't believe. Like, I have one of her eyelets, like, on my wall to be a model of what my eyelets should be like. That is not what they're like. So, cool. Alright, so I've done two things. I'm gonna take you guys over there. You're currently mounted, which is an interesting new development. I will show you what you look like. You're usually on this tripod right here. 
so that I can use two hands to talk to you. Interesting, eh? For those of you guys who like this part of the day, I almost crossed it out myself, and then I was like, nope, I'm gonna let them do it. Alright, so I've done everything I can do on this evening bonus for this week. Cool. So I guess I'm gonna start the Regency Bonner. Actually, it's kind of late at night, so what I'm gonna do is not do that, and I'm gonna go watch Westworld and be compassionate to myself, and then come and cut a bigger crown tomorrow, and possibly assemble this bonnet. I'm very excited about that. It's the next day, so I have decided that part of my compassionate goals is that I will allow myself free range roaming, which is something I've been doing a lot lately. Maybe you guys have been too. I have this very long list of things that needs to get done that I've always keep in my phone, just for whenever I have time to do stuff. And I find that I go downstairs every day and I have this plan about all the things that are going to happen that day. And then I just like do what I did yesterday, which is like go, oh, look at the microwave, it's dirty. I think I'll spend an hour and a half cleaning that with a toothbrush or like whatever. I also put up party lights yesterday, like these things were not on my list. They were defo, not something I was planning on getting done. Cool. So, <laughs> I spent a bunch of time doing things that I wasn't supposed to do, but they were very productive things. So, part of my compassionateness, or compassionate, compassion, just compassion, not compassionate, compassion. <laughs> part of my compassion towards myself is that I'm like saying, well, that was productive, so all good. <laughs> so, in that vein, despite having this plan of all the things I'm going to sew this week, which really only counts for the Regency bonnet, left at this point, which I can still totally get done. My mom actually called me this morning and asked me to make her some masks. <laughs> so I had offered uh, a week or two ago and she was like, I've got them from the doctor, it's fine. And then she's like, calls today and says, oh, I've ordered some on the internet, but they're not coming for a month. And I'm like, whoa, you got masks? Like, doctors can't get masks. How are you getting masks? She's like, they're not coming for a month. And I'm like, yeah, and still, like, <laughs> Anyway, so she did ask, and she never asked for anything, like almost ever, so I'm gonna go ahead and make her some masks today instead of making this bonnet. Or maybe in addition to, who knows, I need to hang up the rest of the party lights today, so we don't even know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> being compassionate towards my free range productivity is fine, as long as I'm being productive, that's all that matters. So I'm in here, I'm gonna figure out how to make some masks, I don't know what I'm doing at all. So we're going to give it a go. It is many, many hours later, and I have five Porg masks made. The first one took me like an hour, the second one took me like an hour, and then the last three I have done like in like an hour and a half or so, which is not so bad, so I can assemble on these. I estimate, I have to make like 18. <laughs> um, I estimate I can get most of those done tomorrow. The longest thing to do is to make this stupid cord that goes through it to like 
you know, wrap around. Um, this takes for freaking ever to turn and stuff, and it is what it is, so whatever. I'm listening to um, Stephen Fry's Victorian Secrets on my phone while I do this and talking to friends, so. Um, largely today, though, I put up party lights in my backyard. I finished putting them up and they look awesome. I do actually need another 25 foot section, so I have sent away to Amazon, who is surprisingly going to fulfill that sooner than I thought. I think Monday. Um, and it is Wednesday, so that's not too bad, given that they keep threatening a month for everything, so. Um, apparently there's a strike, though, where Amazon workers are saying, like, if it's not actually something that's, like, in dire need, then they shouldn't have to fill it because they shouldn't be working, and I, ooh, I kind of agree with them now that I've heard about that, so now I feel about bad about all the things I'm ordering on Amazon. Yeah, so, anyway, um, so I'm just gonna keep making masks this week, probably tomorrow also. Um, hopefully you get as many as I can done tomorrow or the next day, and then mail these out to people, and then finish my bonnet. <laughs> This seemed like more urgent when when mom calls and asks and mom doesn't call and ask you make the things um and then my cousins wanted some and so i this this is just getting out of hand so yeah masks it is currently i have one that got to about here of turning this far and then it came off so i have to like unturn it fun times fun times. If anyone's ever had to do this, it's awesome. I, th I think a lot of people use a pin to do it, so I'm gonna try that technique. Anyway, um, how are you guys doing? Please leave me comments down below and let me know how you're doing. Uh, if you're new here, please go introduce yourself because I love talking to you guys in the comments and meeting you guys, especially the new people. Um, if you have been around around a while please leave me what you're working on what you're listening to what you're reading what is your everyone calls it quarantine reading or quarantine i'm like we're not actually quarantined we are social distancing um but yeah what are you guys uh what are you guys doing in your social distancing time i would love to know that also how are you doing in your social distancing time i feel like a lot of people feel guilty because they're not doing all the things and I mean I think I've told you guys my stance on that I feel like you guys should not do stuff if you don't want to do stuff I've been um, weirdly productive today and the, yesterday also so I feel pretty good about that um, it makes me feel better about the state of the world when I am productive so that's that's why I'm pushing pretty hard to be productive um, because if when I just lay there and watch the Great British Baking so Show all day. I get to the end of the day and I'm like, wow, I didn't do anything with my life today. What a waste. <laughs> so, um, but I certainly have done my fair share of that and I would do not begrudge anyone that pleasure. It is actually kind of a joy to do it. It's just, I have a Capricorn brain that defo wants me to get stuff done. How do you get this back out? Ooh, this is going to be rough. I've been picking at this thing and it's coming out like millimeter by millimeter. I'm not even gonna say what this looks like either. It's... Ooh, I do have things to talk about. Um, my friend Abby from American Duchess has launched her YouTube channel and she's amazing. She did a video on historical costumers and what Hog Hogwarts house they are and man, she did some science on that one. I was mad impressed with her. <laughs> Um, she's very funny. Brandon McKinney of The Delineator also started his YouTube channel and he starts talking about parasols. He's my parasol buddy. If you guys like my parasol videos, it's nothing compared to his collection. Ooh, he's got some buttes in there and he's, he's like the expert at recovering them. Definitely go check out his channel. Who else? Kate from Willoughby and Rose. She is like an 18th century shift making goddess. She sells her shifts, by the way. So do go give her 
your patronage if you're in the need of an 18th century shift. Do remember to support your small businesses. If you are a person who is not out of work and has the funds and who's always needed American Duchess shoes or a red threaded corset or a shift or anything, now is the time, guys. Like, we're not spending money in other ways because, frankly, we can't go out and do that. So, if you can afford it and you're, you're a person who has a job that's fairly stable that you can afford to spend a little scratch supporting some small businesses in this community, now is the time because they are hurting. The numbers I've heard are really bad. So, definitely go help out these folks help them keep their businesses alive so that when we come out of this they will be there for us to supply us with shoes and corsets and shifts and all the other millions of things that we need in order to be historical costumers or costumers or for those of you who aren't costumers say you're a knitter go buy yarn from your etsy seller of choice or whoever it is that you get yarn from that is a small business do the thing now while they they desperately need the money because their income is tragically lost due to this event. Because we're not going to events right now, so we're not buying the things and, you know, people are being very frugal, which is smart. But if you can afford to not do that, now's the time. We will all get by with a little help from our friends, right? Right. Can you hear the heater? What else is happening right now? Oh, I filmed my Patreon update video, which I really do need to edit and post for them, given that it is April Fool's Day today. However, I'm sitting here picking this thing out. <laughs> so if you're a patron and you're like, where's my video? No one is like that. My patrons are awesome. Um, there's a little giveaway for them in, in this month's video, so they will be excited about that. Actually, only people of a particular size will be excited about that, but there is another giveaway next month, I think. This is some tediousness, people. Can't recommend this. I don't I, like, it almost seems easier just to cut a new one at this point. But no. But no, I'm gonna do this. Because that's how I am. It's, it is getting less. Like, I, I pulled out probably an inch. <laughs> Things you never thought you'd say on camera. Yes! Victory! Yes! Meanwhile, I've made like two other tapes, three other tapes, because I had to stop because the pen was like digging into my finger as I was going, so I did it really slowly. But it's done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's the next day. <clears throat> I have eight more of these masks done. Um, I need to go ahead and make eight more tapes, so that's going to take me quite some time tonight. I just wanted to check in and say, I'm not checked out anymore, I'm sewing, <laughs> but I'm making masks for people and my list keeps getting longer because people keep asking me, they're like, oh, you're making masks? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I will make you some. Okay, it's Friday and I want to send out as many of these masks as I can today, so I'm packaging up as many as I can and sending them out. So that's what I'm going to do first thing. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do more masks today or wait until tomorrow. kind of need a break, but I'm also kind of like, I just want to get this over with, get these done, because they're kind of a pain in the butt. But I want also people to have them as soon as possible. And the postal service doesn't run on Sunday. So I would like to go ahead and send them out as fast as possible. I also got a little package from American Duchess this morning. So I'll unbox those in a little bit. And I have a big old bag of stuff to go through and show you. It's a bunch of lace that was given to me by Peggy of Noodle Stitch for my ball gown. Um, and I haven't gotten to show you guys that stuff yet. So I will lay it all out and show it to you in just a little while after I get my shipping department under control. All right, I got all but one package shipped and I have cut out 13 more masks. I actually need eight to send to family and then I was gonna make one more for me because I don't actually have one yet. Seems important. Maybe I'll make two for me. I don't know. So basically I'll have leftover masks for the next time one of my friends or family is like, hey are you making masks? I can be like, here, just wear this. I'm not making any more. So <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get them done today. I have a little Tarzan watching party to go to tonight so I might do 
some mask sewing while I'm watching Tarzan. Anyway, why I am here now is to show you these American Duchess shoes that I got in the mail. Again, now is the time. Uh, these are Colette's, so they're teaching me how to make... Oh. Oh, I ordered... Oh, yeah, okay. I ordered this. A little pin. I'm a Patreon member, but I'm... I just bought the pin because they need the money. Because they're a small business. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. This is so not easy to do with one hand. Rad. I now feel bad for every unboxing video. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. I'm going to go try these on and see how they fit. Hopefully they're amazing. Okay, so they do fit and they're beautiful and I love them. However... I have not shaved my legs in the last quarantine, so yeah, not showing you that. Cool. I'll shave my legs and put some stockings on and show them to you later. <laughs> real talk, kids. Real talk. I'm not going to shave during quarantine. That's just not happening, because I don't have to. If I have to be stuck in here, I'm doing it comfortably. Oh, I do have amazing news, though. My friend Constance, who has been in this vlog a couple times when I go to England, um, she started her own YouTube channel. And I am so hype. Like, how to describe Constance? She's a suffragette witch, and like, I'm not kidding. She lives on a farm and she dresses, um, well, I would say Edwardian a lot of the time, but just like however she wants. But it's not even like history bounding, it's like that's just how she's always dressed. And she's absolutely amazing and charming and delightful. And she's teaching us about tiny treadle, no, not treadle, uh, hand crank sewing machines and starch. And I know she's currently, spoilers, filming one on buttons. So like, the hype is real for me. Like I was wired for sound last night. I was up at four o'clock in the morning when I found out um, because I'm basically nocturnal and I stay up all night. <laughs> I then was up till 5.30 because I was so excited that Constance had started her channel. So I am very, very excited about it. I will link her down below. She's absolutely amazing. You guys should all go subscribe to her because you will get the biggest kick out of her. She is delightful and so quintessentially like amazingly British. It's, it's, it's awesome. I love her to death. Hmm. Where should you go? Do you fit here? Yes. Cool. Now American Duchess is on my wall. So there were a bunch of us who watch Disney movies on Friday night now because we organized very quickly <laughs> to keep ourselves occupied. So we're watching Tarzan this week, um, which I'm <laughs> super excited about. I've only ever seen it once before because it came out um, during when I was um, like in college and in the I'm too cool to watch movies from Disney phase that only lasted me like three or four years um, and then I watched all the ones that happened while I was out but yeah I missed like Tarzan I'm kind of grateful I missed Pocahontas because that is like some cultural appropriation I cannot get behind I did see Mulan in the theaters there's a bunch of them that came out, like, all around that Tangled, stuff like that. But I ended up loving most of those movies, so. Anyway, we're having a good time watching that now. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Well, I guess it's Saturday. Anyway, I have 13 stacks of masks that are ready to be, like, hemmed. And then um, I thought tomorrow I would go through and just show you the general process of, like, how this mask gets made. But then... Also talk you through like what I mean by I'm slow <laughs> because I did a whole I do a whole bunch of extra stuff when I'm making these masks that makes it extra slow. Um, I have 13 of the tapes prepped. I need to go ahead and zigzag the edges. This is one of the things that makes me slow is that I'm like oh I'm gonna zigzag this edge so it doesn't like disintegrate in the laundry. So yeah I'll do that tomorrow. Um, I do have that bag of lace that I was gonna go through as well. So. This week is turning out significantly different than I thought. How unusual. Seems like the way it always goes with me. This is not what I thought was gonna happen. That bonnet is never gonna get made. <laughs> It'll get made, I promise, but I wanna get this done and over with, so yeah. Fun times. It should be done tomorrow though, so that that's good. 
Friends, I would love to tell you that it is Saturday morning, but it is not. It is Saturday at 2.30. And you know why? Because I have been going nocturnal. Like, absolutely. Every night I'm up till 4 o'clock in the morning, and every morning I sleep until noon. <sighs> this is the natural state of things. This is how I go normally, so that's fine. But <clears throat> compassionate goals. Speaking of compassionate goals, that bonnet is not happening. <laughs> I did get the interwining ordered and also the boning ordered. In fact, the boning, the boning, the burning, the boning has arrived. So I'm gonna go through that in a little bit and make sure it's all correct and stuff. Um, what else did I get? I got a shimmy set pattern so that I can lie to myself and pretend that someday I can look like the Emma movie. Um, the last thing I have to show you right now is, okay, so Bernadette got sold, sent a tiny Bernadette doll that someone handcrafted for her, which is absolutely beautiful and <laughs> kind of intense. Um, her clothes are weird though, so right now, so I'm like trying to fix them. Anyway, this is she. Um, and <clears throat> Bernadette has even more of a strict rule about, hey, don't send me stuff to my P.O. box than I do. So she had her moment with this doll <laughs> and then she was like, I don't know what to do with this. And I'm like, send it to me and I'll have a good time. And I was going to make parody videos of Bernadette's videos using this tiny doll. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but upon seeing it, I'm like, oh, it's so beautifully crafted. Like that seems mean now, like even though it's just fun and I'm just being funny. Like I also don't want to be mean to the person who made this and make her feel like I'm making fun of her work, which I'm not. <laughs> um, so I may have some fun with it, but I'm just like, oh, I shouldn't be a giant jerk. But I'm going to make her my little tiny Bernadette workroom assistant. So I'm going to put her up, maybe up on that shelf up there, or I don't know where she would fit, but I'll find a spot for her. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm excited to have tiny Bernadette. She's, she's a little bit creepy, <laughs> um, but she's very beautifully painted. Let's see if I can get some, like good close-ups of her tiny face. Will you focus? Look at that. It's beautiful. For now I put her over here with Wonder Woman and Scary Godmother so she has a tiny ho home there for with her tiny also amazing woman friends. Alright so we talked about the fact that I was gonna show you guys what the deal is with the mask making. So I got this pattern online. If I can figure out which one it is I'll link it down below but it's pretty common. The reason that I am so personally slow is that I'm going a couple extra miles on this guy and I'll show you how and why it makes me, like when I tell you I'm a so slower, this is what I mean. They only have one piece of fabric in theirs. Uh, I line mine so that it'll be four layers of fabric because I've been told by, I think, Sosteen that four layers is good. And then I also zigzag all the edges because this these are going to go through the wash a lot. So I don't want them to fray or get weird or whatever, so I have been basically zigzagging them together and that helps flatline it. The rest of this is, uh, I'll show you the process of making them too, but I even these tiny little side pieces that end up being the things that hold the tapes onto your head, I've zigzagged around these guys. These are not lined though. These are the tapes and I think most of the time they just in the instructions have you basically sew, I don't know if you can see my stitch line here. Yeah, they have you sew the stitch line right here and then that's it. That's the tape. And I'm like, no. So I go through and I zigzag this edge right here and then I flip this tape inside out and that does take a while. I sit there with a safety pin turning them inside out because it'll survive washing a lot better if it, if this raw edge isn't here and if it's not like out in the world. So that has been adding time and then I will show you the pleating process of what happens to these in just a minute but then I also baste that down and then when I sew it right before I sew the entire side shut I baste that down because it makes it go through my machine easier and it makes the tops line up a little bit better so anyway the process is pretty simple you make this rectangle I guess <laughs> it is 14.25 long and 7.75 wide uh, you do have to pay attention to pattern because I have a whole bunch where the porgs go sideways and then these guys they say four and a half by one and three quarters and I said four because four and a half actually takes up like the entire side of it and it's kind of weird it's actually a little bit better if they're a little bit smaller so <clears throat> I've made them that way and then you hem them it's supposed to be a quarter of an inch. This is on a quarter of an inch. This is slightly more than a quarter of an inch. 
but I was hemming them so that they line up with each other because sometimes your cutting's a little wonky or like this fabric that I have is all off grain. I have 30 yards of off grain fabric, uh, muslin fabric, which I'm not that hype about, so yay. So what I'm gonna do now is go take this and uh, run a, a, a stitch down both sides of all of these and I have, I think, 13 here and then all of the sides. So if I have 13 masks, I have 26 sides. So I, I run the stitch along this. Um, I don't cut. I figured out I can, not, I can do it without cutting in between and I just line these all up together and stick them through and then cut them apart afterwards, <laughs> which is kind of a funny thing. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, this is what I mean. Like I'm just feeding them in one, one after the other. So like when they come out, they're all connected, but it makes it go a lot faster. And then I just go through and clip all the threads. Okay, so I have all these guys prepped, like all the hems are done and all these tapes are zigzagged. I need to turn these guys inside out, which is a biz notch, but here we are. And then um, mark and make these masks. So I'm gonna actually make, I usually do them in batches of four or five because it makes me less insane <laughs> than just trying to do them all at the same time. So I'm gonna actually do a set of four because I have two friends that need two each so I'm gonna make two porgs and two regulars and create these masks so I'll show you what the markings are. Okay at this point I've done this enough that I just know these by heart. So this is what the markings are and basically you mark at 1.75 and then 7 eighths and then another half after that each time and you take this dotted line and you pull it up to the solid line on each one. Okay, and batch processing these. So normally they would tell you to press these and then to go ahead and press this in half, these little side wings, and then put them here. Actually, this whole thing would get folded this way with the outside in. And you put these little side wings here and on the other side and then you'd sew up the sides and then you'd be done except that's not what I do <laughs> um, I go ahead and press these flat I press these in half then I go baste this <clears throat> which helps hold it down and if you don't baste it and you just pin all this stuff in it ends up making the top like uneven with each other when you fold it out so I baste and then I pin these guys in and then I fold it and then I baste again and then I sew so I'll show you all that so this guy's been pressed and now basted so now what I'm gonna do is porgs going the right direction I'm gonna place this here and I'm gonna put a pin in here and here and place this guy here and put a pin here and here and then fold this over and pin it and then I'm gonna baste up Paste up always towards the top making sure that these two tops align up and then I'm gonna sew at a normal stitch length and for some reason the basting helps it not like slide around a lot because I was getting a lot of slide and then you flip it inside out and you're all good for those of you keeping tra track I finished Stephen Fry's Victorian Secrets yeah and I'm on to the dispatcher which is an audible original by John Scalzi and read by Zachary Quinto and it's about uh, a guy whose job is literally to murder people who are about to die anyway because there's a new miracle out which if you are murdered you get essentially reset back into your body you wake up in your bed like everything's fine but only if you're murdered like if you die of any other thing you just die so it's pretty good so far so I am in fact pinning these together first and then putting this down in this proper spot and moving the pin to hold the whole thing and your line that used to be the, what you would call the middle mark, it may not be the middle mark anymore, <laughs> just from random reasons. Sometimes I pin the top of this section too, to like, make sure it stays pretty even. And just to reiterate, it is completely inside out when you sew it, and then you pop it back out. And you sew along the top here, but just a little ways, leaving a pocket in case someone wants to put a filter inside. Or you could just sew it all the way up if you know you're not going to put a filter in there. I leave it open just so people have a choice. Um, I, when I'm basting, I have it up here at five. I don't put it actually back down at two. I put it at about three because the thickness of, like this is double thick and then it's also pleated. So triple that. 
it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with right there, even though this looks really small. And that's why I based it is because it helps hold it down. Um, but I don't try to go back down to normal. I go about one above it because it the increased stitch length helps it not get all weird. All right, so once you have this like this, you just flip it inside out. And then I use a corner turner on the corners, obviously. You can sometimes use a little flappy things to help wing it out a little bit, but you're pretty much there. You just need to put the tapes up and I sew this, like I said, for a little pocket and then you're all done. All right, so then you like turn the tapes and slide them through. I just go up one side, make a loop and come back down. This goes around your head and the bottom goes around and ties. The one thing I would say is if you have a pattern, watch out because <clears throat> I looked at what side the porgs were going on the inside but not what porgs were going on the outside, so they're all upside down on this, but who cares, right? I have those all marked, and they just need to get pinned and sewed, and then they will be done as well. Woo-woo. Hey guys, it's Sunday. I worked until 2 o'clock yesterday, and I wasn't done, and I was like... Mm. <sighs> cool. So, I finished the last ones. Here they are. There's eight for my aunt and uncle and cousin and her kid, and there's my one lonely mask. Don't worry, I made two for Chris, so there are also two more in this house. Plus I sent one to Hannah, and she's sending me one of hers back. So we did like a mask swap as like a way to make this like slightly less tedious. <laughs> anyway, so I'm sending these out. I'm going to postage them now and then take them to the post office and call them done. It is rainy outside. Doesn't even look like it's raining outside, but it is. And I am joyous about that because California needs more water, so yay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna wrap these up and then I am gonna show you the lace that I got. And then I'm gonna call this vlog done and edit it and give it to you guys because everyone's like, where's your vlog? And I'm like, my vlog's boring. And they're like, give it to me anyway. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> So here you are. I feel like this head bonnet is now a running joke. Like every single literal video I'm like, I'm gonna make that bonnet and then I don't. So maybe next week I just will not say that I'm gonna make it and then I'll just do it. <sighs> we shall see. <laughs> Compassionate deadlines, people. Like that's actually like, Let's talk about that for a minute. It is, it's it's important to be compassionate about it. Like set yourself some deadlines and if you don't make them or you decide to do something else instead, that's okay. Like it's totally fine. You should feel comfortable to do that and not give yourself a whole bunch of crap. The deadlines are really only there to motivate you to do something instead of nothing because otherwise we will just all sit around and eat chips and watch Netflix for the entire quarantine isolation, whatever we're doing, social distancing time. And you know what, if you want to sit around and eat chips, do that too. Like honestly, if that's if that's the thing that's keeping you sane, do that thing. I just feel like I want to make something with my hands. What I will say though is making these masks gave me a goal and it gave me something to do for a week basically and like I wanted to get them done and out so it gave me a deadline and deadlines are important so compassionate deadlines but deadlines so I'm gonna keep up with this and keep it going and see how it goes and I'll report back about how my deadlines are working out for me but so far so good. Okay, so I have to do this in two sections, crazy, because there's so much of it. So this is the lace that Peggy gave me from Noodle Stitch on Instagram. Holy cow, this is beautiful. Some of it's like little pieces that you would like stick here or there, and some of it is enough to go around hems. Like these you could separate and use them as decoration on the hem. And I think there's a couple more of these somewhere. That's a little tiny chunko. Here's the rest of it. Um, yeah, so on my way home from Seattle, I stopped to have lunch with her real quick. It's like the only little joy on that trip. Um, and she gave me this big bag of lace, which I'm just like, whoa. So this lace is awesome and all of this is that too, which is cool. And then this insertion piece here, it's beautiful. This one like really kills me, it's beautiful. Just these like 
water plants. So pretty. And then she also gave me this gigantic beeswax. Like, oh my god. It's perfect. It's amazing. I'm gonna have wax for the rest of my life. Like, literally, we'll never need wax again. So excited. Okay, well, I'm gonna call this vlog because people are starting to threaten to send out search parties. <laughs> Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, it's nice to get back into the swing of things. Um, the masks did help me get back into the swing of things, so yay. Yay for that. Um, I am done making masks, though. Finished. <laughs> um, so, if you like this vlog, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and I will see you guys next time with another vlog slash video, because I have other ideas.